G'day, this is Captain Uber, and in this video I'm going to be giving you a few tips on how to defeat the new raid boss. The new raid boss is called Earl, and you get him by new king Mononga Mine. It starts a colossal problem off, you have to go down in the mines and kill a Wendigo Colossus, which is uh, one of the more tougher enemies that you'll face in the game. But before we actually start the event, I've got a little bit of a hot tip for you to where to actually drop the nuke. Because no matter how this event goes, you're going to be pushed out the, the exit of this mine, um, whether you win or lose this event. So what you want to do with the nuke in this position is get it to a point where it's only just covering that little pickaxe and shovel icon. Therefore, when you exit the mine, you don't have to run through the complete radius of a nuke zone to actually get out of there. So just find a place on the map where he at least covers the entire icon and you should be good to go. The nuke is on its way, we've got about 8 minutes until the event starts, so I'll see you when we get there. And as you can tell, despite being on the very edge of the nuke zone, the colossal problem event has started. What this will also do is allow you access to the sunny top station, you don't have to be in superior ride right resistance stuff to actually get there that's got a script in there it's got a vendor so if you want to offload anything after the fight maybe some of your awards then you can go ahead and do that and that's not too far away from the raider crater so yeah you can drop off any of the um bullion rewards there as well so that's pretty convenient okay so we're in the mine now there's plenty of workbenches around if you want to get yourself prepared for the fight do take a look at your armor and weapon before you get going i know i did Look at that, we're ready to go. It's a bloody 25-25, uh, fix, uh, not fixer, handmade, because I dumped my fixer in the river. Now it belongs to the gulpers. Anyway, so you'll find lots of these Wendigo spawns in the fight. Preferably you don't have to, you won't find them, but they're around. They're a little bit tougher than your standard run-of-the-mill, um, Wendigos, but they will drop fiberglass and screws, which is very convenient. Also, they'll have a, a um chance to actually drop the type of ammo that you're holding. See, 29 Ultra Sight 556 rounds, which is very good because potentially you could see that as a very ammo efficient way of either farming the stuff without having to use flux or anything, or I guess time efficient. But, you know, if you use less bullets than it takes to uh, kill the thing, then it drops them, then you're always in for a gain. Also, this one always dresses his Barbie. And on occasion, this uh, particular corpse T-poses. Not today. Okay, so we're about 40 seconds until the rocks fall. We can actually examine the arena and everything, but what I want to just preface this by is that the way to do it is stealth. If you can't stealth, then you're not going to get the damage output needed, or you're going to use too many bullets. If you're using a heavy gunner build, you might want to switch over to something else. Shotguns can work okay, um, as long as it's suppressed. If you've got a high strength character, then you probably want to go for melee, but uh, yeah. Obviously, a stealth commando like this one is going to have a really easy time doing the stuff. The problem is that um, she's got only two endurance and revenant, which probably shouldn't even be there. Let's go for something like fireproof, I think. But anyways, it's a uh, jump and down, and we can actually have a look at the little arena. Um, this is obviously a one-way ticket, but if you've got a jetpack, you can actually fly out of there. Completely pointless though, because there's no way you can actually shoot L. So you'll drop in the arena, you'll notice how there's kind of foggy, there's some weird holes in the roof, and basically, these ceiling holes are what I call death fountains. They just spew down damage over time during the fight, and there's no real, um, there's no real indication for them actually being here. Um, there's a, like a visual indication that they're about to blow, but there's no sound, and so you, you'll likely miss it. So what you want to do is avoid these entirely, and there's a kind of an easy way to do that. Also, along the outskirts, you'll find there's a bit of fire here and there. There's the toxic green barrels, which will give you an acid damage over time, which is not as bad as the fire one, but it's still rather annoying. But all of this is basically a no-go zone, and if... If we look at the center here, um, this is all covered in light, so it's going to easily blow your stealth, so don't bother going in the middle. And you'll find that this is where all of the Wendigo spawns congregate, and if we ever get an instance of him calling in, I'll point it out so you know exactly what happens. But as you can tell over here, there's none of the damage um, fountains from the ceiling, so this is the easiest, this is the safest place 
to fight the thing from. This is a choke point over here where there's one directly over the middle, so don't even think about taking this lane. That is a bad idea. We've got another one there, and one there right where he's spawning. He's usually munching on a corpse before we get started, but... What you want to do is, uh, firstly, start crippling him. Um... Potentially, you just want to lead him around to that section and then cripple him in place. If you cripple both of his legs, he stops moving, so that's really important. But he still has a range attack that is fairly accurate, but there are ways you can actually dodge that. So, we'll just get stuck into him a little bit. We'll just get him nice and aggroed, and then we'll fall back a little bit. If he's got no idea where you are, he'll just sort of spit on the ground and be a real dick about it, but... Um, since, uh, I don't want to get caught by the damage over time, I'm going through mid, which is potentially a problem. But we'll keep on shooting him and tickling him, and we'll see if we can't bring him over here. You'll notice how I've got the legendary perks going, so Winter's power is a little bit exaggerated over here. Alright, so, I'm going to shoot him over here, and he's going to spit goo over there. I want him to spit over here now, so I'll quickly shoot him over there. And notice how he sort of follows where you have been shooting. So, in that sort of way, you can actually manipulate where he's going to be spitting his noxious goo. And that'll give you an, the easiest chance to actually dodge his attack. So make sure you're always on the move, strafe left and right whenever you attack. Also, speaking of damage on this guy, you'll notice when I shoot him once... I'll do okay damage for the first shot, but then my damage drops right away. We've actually managed to cripple a leg there. Thank you very much, Tormentor. And we'll cripple the other one and stop him in place because he's in the safe zone here and we're good. You'll notice there's a couple of Wendigo spawns here. No problem for a stealth commando. You can use a jetpack to your advantage here if you have it. You can stay clear of his blast, but make sure you do move. He's going to spit over there now, hopefully. Yep. So, it is relatively easy to avoid his acid blasts or whatever. You just gotta know what you're doing. So, once you've got him stuck in place and um, spitting where you want him to, i.e. where you're not, and he's just mutated too, so that'll make sure his... Uh, that'll make his um, limbs regenerate, so you gotta shoot him again, basically. Gotta move now, because he's going to huck loogies over there. Alright, there's one done. He's going to spit over there-ish now. Or around him. I think we've crippled both things again. Very convenient. And once you cripple one of the heads, you've crippled them all. That was a little bit close. Let's just make sure we're not over that. And you'll notice there's some adds around. Luckily for me, I've picked up some damage over time. Just counteract that with a stim pack. Luckily for me, um, they're sort of ag they're not aggroed, so they'll just congregate over there. And I can use them to gain adrenaline because on the PTS, adrenaline ain't broken. So we'll use our Adrenaline to hit him a little bit harder. That was a very accurate spit. Um, I haven't gotten to danger on him just yet, but if he does, chances are, since I've killed so many of his minions at this point, he'll call in another. He'll do this little roaring animation, and it's, it's kind of cool, I guess. And yep, he's moving now. He's a little bit more... Um, he's a little bit less predictable when he's moving, so make sure you always... Try to stop him in his tracks, especially if you're doing melee and you want him to not run to where there's damage over time, because he can take it. He can take it quite easily, but you can't, especially when you've got this amount of health. There we go. Alright, so I want to avoid that damage over time. Unfortunately, I couldn't. And if you run into the little loogies that he spits on the ground, it'll slow you down, so it's a definite no-no. Don't do that. And I'd like to get myself detected by him for a second to show off the little animation he does, so... Please do the thing. Yeah? No? Really? Surely you can do better. I'm right here, come on. There we go. There's his little reinforcement call. If he does that, he's gonna stand there for a few seconds. If you're running stealth, that is your chance to get the hell out of dodge. And, um... Potentially, it is a useful thing to have him... to bait him into doing. Because what that means you can do is quickly get adrenaline off all these of this goddamn peanut gallery, and they won't be able to do anything. Alright, we're not getting the, like, the maximum amount of sneak attack criticals we could get, because we're not playing during the day. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. I pressed the wrong button there. That's okay. We've seemed to have lost Earl, though. He, he needs, he's gone over there. He's gone walkabouts. So let's not do that. 
He needs to go away. All right. Just hugging the ceiling here, making sure we aren't getting ourselves hit. And make sure you do clear out the field, because whilst you focus on him, you can have your guard let down on any other Wendigoos around the area. And then they might detect you, and when they do, obviously, old mate Earl over here. That was close. We'll get you stopped right there, mate. Surely that's going to do it. That's going to do the trick, surely. Yep. All right, he's stopped in his tracks now, and he will now spit to my last known location, which should be about there-ish. There we go. Black clockwork. So there's a little bit more to this than waiting for a dumb big pink bat to land. But if you if you know his behavior, if you can read him properly, if you manipulate him properly, it's super easy. And that's kind of all you need to know about soloing this thing. I'll quickly go over my build once I get out of here, but once the event's over, grab your loot, instigating 10 mil. It's honestly, that's not terrible. Nice drop. Now this is where you got to run your ass off. Just make sure you avoid all the damage over time fountains. This cheeky one has got me on a few occasions. If you do happen to pick up the damage over time, just have this impacts on speed dial. You should be able to counteract it for the most part. So with high uh, agility and endurance, I don't have great endurance, but I've got all of the action points in the world. You can sprint through here and this event is as good as over. Don't forget this chest here. It contains some caps, I guess, which is nice. And again, remember how I said we've, we've got this on the edge of a nuke zone? Well, since we can't tank those radiation, either grab your commie suit if you're a dirty communist, or if you're a cool dude, get in your American-made power armor suit. Very nice. Hop in there and then step outside. We're now on the outside and we've got an unyielding thing. Yeah, this event always drops you a three-star thing. Also, I just got a Executioner's Cursed Harpoon Gun. Well, that's nice, isn't it? So, these are the bastards that'll stop you from fast traveling out. This is why you want to grab yourself some power armor, because not all the time you'll be able to actually get yourself out. But if I keep running in this direction, I'll have to run less than 50 or so meters before the rads will say, hey, there's none here, and I'm outside of the nuke zone. Up out of the power armor, and then I can script what I've got as I like. And that's kind of the gist of it. It's mostly about being able to read what he does and keeping yourself safe in the back. I just ran in back into the nuke zone. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to go over in this direction. But, yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. If you can read him, if you can, if you, if you know his attacks and figure out what you can do. Obviously, crippling him is great, so if you've got a shotgunner type setup, you can do it that way, but in terms of uh, how to outplay it or how to play it properly, then it's pretty easy. Even with a bloodied build, you can get away with it because you can outsmart the enemies and not get hit. The major problem is just avoiding the damage over time, which easily can be counteracted by a stim pack. Again, you're going to have to I would suggest playing in third person if you've got any of those weird color effects on. Also, it's raining outside of a mushroom cloud. That would be very irradiated rain. I'd probably get out of that if I were you. But yeah, make sure you're in, you've got the stim packs on speed dial whenever your, color, uh, whenever your character basically changes color, whether they glow green or orange or whatever, have the fiery effects. Just make sure you're doing that. If you do die, it's not the end of the world. Um, what I do suggest is grab a bunch of uh, dirty water for you to down because when you when you um, respawn, you'll be over nerd rage dash shot. So to get back down into it, just gulp down some dirty water. If you've got a disease cure on you, that'll counteract the parasites or the dysentery that it might give you. But it's low, to be honest. One percent chance. Stranger things have happened though, right? But that's yeah. That's that's my guide on how to do stuff in this. It's a cursed harpoon gun. That's terrible, actually. Executioner's not really a fan. Also, bash damage, just bad drops. But as you can tell, I got a three-star weapon, which was nice. A three-star um, unyielding wood bit. So that's 64 script. And then this one for another 15 script on top of that. So, And also, you probably saw the events. I, I got eight treasury notes bringing me to that. And I've also got Earl's Pocket Watch, which I will burn in a fire. I will throw that in the Fissure Site Prime. Oh, so it's not, it's not raining anymore. I think you get the idea. I'm kind of rambling now. Thank you for watching, guys.
Also, if you'd like to see gameplay on my other builds, I did a video where I took them on with, uh, mostly solo, with all of my main combat builds. And if you're wondering what the build was, this is it. And the legendary perks as such. These won't be live when the, um, actual event is hit, but that's okay, because I'll be playing in Australian servers and I won't be lagging, so it should be probably easier, to be honest.